no doubt about it, American Walnut has no equal. It showcases a wonderful dark color, exciting grain patterns, and all kinds of figure. But there is a downside. It's the nature of the lumber to have a lot of color variety, and sometimes that's okay, especially for custom handmade projects that show off the wood's character or when you're okay with doing some extra milling and arranging of your boards. But sometimes that color variety isn't okay. Hey folks, I'm Mark from Woodworker Source, and we're a retail hardwood lumber supplier owned and operated right in Arizona. Fortunately, there are a good couple of tricks for dealing with the color differences in walnut. I thought I'd make this tabletop and show you a four-step finishing recipe that can blend the heartwood and the sapwood together into a nice, dark, contrasty, yet nuanced, reddish-brown kind of a color. We're gonna go from this to this. Now to pull this off, we're gonna first use a dye to establish a foundational color. And then we're gonna glaze it with a dark brown oil-based stain. And what that's going to do is bring out the natural characteristic in the wood and enhance it. And then it'll also let us tone that final color just a little bit. Now, why would you do this to your project? First, this is one way to reduce your waste. Instead of cutting around all that sapwood that might be present in your boards, you can use this finishing technique instead and still get nice, dark, even color. And second, just like you and me, walnut does fade with age. And what happens to walnut's color is it becomes a little more amber or a little bit more blonde. And that's just thanks to exposure to UV light. Now, if you don't like that, here's a way that you can give your project a good color that lasts over the long haul. And third, if you demand absolute control over that final color, and especially if you're gonna make a suite of projects that go together like a bed and a dresser, or maybe a pair of end tables, this isn't too bad of a process to use to keep the color consistent from project to project. Of course, if you don't need this much color control, or if you like all that variety in walnut anyway, skip this. Crack open your favorite can of oil or whatever, finish your project that way. You're the artist. Here's what we're gonna need. First, a dye. Balin Solar Lux Medium Brown Walnut Color is the one I'm using. Some sealer. I like D-Wax Shellac, like this one called Seal Coat by Zinser, but any clear sealer will work as long as it's compatible with the rest of this stuff. An oil-based stain. Old Master's Spanish Oak Wiping Stain is what we're using here. You can choose a different color to get more red or to get more brown, but the key is that the stain should be kind of a thick wiping or gel stain and it needs to be oil-based. And a clear top coat finish. Polyurethane, aerosol lacquer, waterborne finishes, and they all work just fine, but for this, I'm gonna choose an aerosol lacquer. We're gonna apply all those products in that same order. We'll also need the usual finishing supplies, such as protective gloves, respirator, foam brushes, applicator sponge, rags or shop towels, finishing pads, plastic sheets to protect your space, and solvents for each of those products, such as mineral spirits, denatured alcohol. Some mixing cups are a pretty good idea too. So let me trim this down to size, give it a decorative edge, and then we'll get started. Just like any project, I've got to prepare the panel with a combination of planing, scraping, and sanding. Lots and lots of sanding. I work through the grits though, 120, 150, 180, 220, and finally 320. Of course, I sand both sides, including the bevels. I also like to vacuum off the dust and then move on to the next step, which is called raising the grain. To raise the grain, I spray the panel with water and wipe it down to prevent pooling and do this to both sides and let it dry for at least an hour. Then I come back and sand it again with 320 grit to knock down the wood fibers that raised up. And the only reason I do this is because the dye I'm going to use is actually mixed with water, and this helps just reduce how much the dye actually raises the grain. So now it's time to make a dye mixture. I use a 50-50 mix of warm tap water and dye. It's just that simple. There are two reasons for this. First, without the water, the dye dries very fast, and it's really hard to control the color. Water gives me more time to work with it because it dries a lot slower. Second, diluting it gives me exactly the color that I want. So if you want yours darker, I suggest just applying two or more coats of diluted dye and work your way up to the color that you want. A thick, terry-sided sponge makes a great applicator for dye, too. I just like to cut it, though, into small chunks that fit right into my palm. I get prepared by propping the panel on some blocks and then getting a couple of shop towels on standby. 
And now it's time to go. You load the sponge with dye and you just start applying it. I like to start at one end and work toward the other using overlapping strokes. You should move fairly quickly but not too fast. You need to stay in control. Then I just grab a shop towel and wipe it down to control the moisture. Flip the panel over and do it all over again. Now before it all dries, I check the top side for problems because now's the time to fix them if you can. On one corner, a little ran over during the application on the back side. So first try wiping with a towel to blend it in. And if that doesn't work, grab a little denatured alcohol and give it a couple of light swipes. And then you just blend it in with another towel. You gotta be pretty light and quick so that it blends in as best you can, but it goes by really fast. I had a little more bleeding on another corner and I just do the same thing there to fix that. I also missed the end grain by mistake, but it's a piece of cake to fix. I fold up a shop towel and create a small but stiff applicator, dip it in the dye and briskly wipe it on and wipe it off. It doesn't have to be perfect since the edge is so tiny anyway, but I like to make sure I get it good. Now after the panel dries, I like to sand it with a 400 grit sanding sponge. The sponge, rather than a block, is really gentle and it knocks down the raised wood fibers and helps you blend any inconsistency in the dye color. Sure, sanding will lighten the color a little bit, but for this procedure it's really not that big of a deal because it takes quite a bit of sanding to cut all the way through the color to bare wood. Still, on the bevels and near the corners, gotta be cautious because you can cut through the color pretty quickly right there. And when you're all done, you've got a nice, even color. Now if you're alarmed at the dull red color, don't be. This is just the way the dye is on raw wood, but it's going to transform into much more natural color in no time. You vacuum off the dust and mix up some de-wax shellac, and let me show you how I do that. The magic ingredient to this though is the mineral oil. In a jar, I just slightly thin seal coat with a touch of denatured alcohol and then add a little bit of mineral oil. The deal is, oil doesn't mix with shellac and that's the whole point. The oil keeps your shellac kind of slick as you apply it, which really helps you get a good, smooth, streak-free coat. Make an applicator with a couple of cotton rags. Soak a small one in the mixture and then you just wrap it up in a larger one. You ball it up and you've got a nice pad that's really easy to use. Let me show you what I mean. Using the pad, take nice, slow, controlled passes. Overlap each one and work from one side to the next. And then when the pad starts to feel a little bit dry, just give it a good squeeze to bleed out a little bit more shellac. Since shellac dries so quickly, you'd normally feel your pad drag and create streaks, but with the mineral oil, it just glides. There's no need to go fast here. You just work as slow as what makes you comfortable and work out any streaks as you go. So the beauty of adding a little bit of mineral oil is that it makes this so easy to use. You let it dry for about 20 minutes, then flip it over to do the backside and repeat the process. When you're all done, you'll have a well-sealed panel without streaks. Now what do you do about the oil? Well, this is easy. It'll rise to the surface as the shellac dries, so all you have to do is wait for the shellac to dry for maybe 30 minutes or so, and then wipe it down with a solvent called naphtha. This is where I like to recommend synthetic finishing pads, but you can use fine grit sandpaper too if that's what you want. The only thing you're trying to do here is just knock down dust nibs or other imperfections in your sealer coat. The point of the sealer is to put a light, clear barrier between the dye and the next step, which is the oil, stain, or glaze. 
it gives you a really nice smooth surface to just tone the final color. It's a pretty cool process that's really easy to do. Even though I'm using a basic oil stain, the technique is called glazing. I like to use a foam brush for this, but just about anything works, even those shop towels. The point of this process is to just apply a full coat of color all the way across your project. Then you brush it with the grain and then go across the grain and repeat. What you're trying to do is make sure that the stain gets a chance to lock itself into the open pores of the wood. Then you just let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes. Oil-based stains are so easy to use because they dry really slowly. There's virtually nothing that can go wrong at this point. What I mean is, if you don't like the color at this point, you just use some mineral spirits and wipe it all off and start over. It's a piece of cake. To tone that final color, you grab a shop towel and just start wiping this off, but go somewhat gently. You want to leave color on the surface. I like to go across the grain first and then go with the grain to blend out streaks. As you start revealing the color underneath, I can't overstate how important it is to go lightly and feather it out with just a gentle touch. Admittedly, this part is really more art than it is science. You just adjust your technique as you see fit and fix anything that needs to be fixed. Even if you do wipe off too much though, it's really easy to add more just by patting it back on. It helps to have one of these shop towels somewhat wet with the stain already so that you can add a little back onto the project wherever you need it. Now watch what happens on the sapwood areas. They'll virtually disappear. You pat on a little bit of stain and then feather it out and voila, it's all blended in. And now here's what I mean by a really light touch. You see that? See how light that is? That's where the art is. Just keep an eye on what you're doing and make it look good to you. And there we go, I think this looks really nice. Now how do you know when you're done? It's sort of like what they say about falling in love. You'll just know it when you see it. And now you just let that dry overnight and then you're ready for the clear top coat. And again, what I'm gonna use here is spray lacquer, but you can use whatever you want. In aerosol cans, I really like to attach a $3 spray handle that you just get at the hardware store. And they make it really easy to use. With spray lacquer, you make really light coats. You don't go too heavy. You make a coat, then you wait 30 or 40 minutes, scuff it with a pad to even out the high spots, and reshoot another coat. Repeat that three or four times or until you're happy. So in the end, we have a gorgeous dark walnut panel that still has the character of beautiful wood. And as a reminder, here's what we started with, and then here's what we ended up with. So there you go. Thanks for watching. If you've still got some questions, just post them below and I'll answer. Thanks.